Fuck, I'm a huge Buckeye fan. If you have a nice jersey, I can help you recruit. Please get these ladies paid. We're going to do what we want. And you're going to have no choice but to respect it. So basically, the NCAA was saying you can't benefit off of your athletic reputation, but we can. It's five seconds on the clock. Are you going to fold under the pressure or are you going to rise to the occasion and make a name for yourself? What's up, y'all? And welcome back to the five seconds on the clock podcast. I am your host, Brandon Williams. And today I'll be reacting to the semifinals of the college football playoff. Let's get straight to it. That LSU offense, it might be unstoppable. There might not be a defense out there who can slow this team down. Well, that's your best bet is trying to slow them down because you won't be able to stop them after they put up 63 against that Oklahoma defense in the Peach Bowl. And they had 49 at halftime. Joe Burrow had seven passing TDs and 403 yards in the first half of the, I was about to say SEC championship, of the Peach Bowl. Record numbers in the first half. And Justin Jefferson, one of his two star wide receivers, he had four receiving touchdowns in the first half. Like just saying this stuff, these numbers really don't make sense. But that's really what took place on that field on Saturday. I was amazed watching it. And my thing was I was going to a party for the Ohio State game because, of course, I'm from Ohio, big Ohio State fan, a lifelong Ohio State fan. And so in my mind I was thinking, okay, I don't want to leave the house until the end of this LSU-Oklahoma game is over. But I saw about the second quarter, I was like, okay, you know what? I don't even have to worry about that. Whenever I'm ready to go, I can leave because this game has well been decided. I mean, not even at halftime, way before halftime. Once it got to the second quarter, you knew it was over because after the first quarter, it was 7-21, to but that's still, you know, a close game. One touchdown, one score can bring Oklahoma right back into the game. But once it got to that second quarter, once it was 35-7, I was like, yeah, it's over. Like, it's just how this game is going. You see the momentum. Oklahoma can't get anything. And, man, shout-out to Jalen Hurts. I'm going to get to him, but shout-out to him. He's a warrior. He didn't give up. We all know his story. Four years as a quarterback and four years in the college football playoffs. So shout out to Jalen Hurts on a great, amazing, memorable career. But I got more coming up on, on him later. I already talked about these two, but Joe Burrow and Justin Jefferson are NFL ready. They're ready today. As we all expect, Joe Burrow will probably be the number one overall pick to the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm a Bengals fan, but really I want Chase Young so he can you know work on the defense and then you can work on the quarterback later. But if it's that quarterback you want nowadays, you got to go get him. So... You know, and he's an Ohio kid. He, he played with Ohio State. So, Burrow, as a, as a bingo, I'm not going to be mad about that. I'm ready for that. And it, really, his performance is making me even more excited. So, come on, Joe. Uh, Justin Jefferson, man, like I said, four touchdowns in the first half. For the game, he finished 14 receptions, 227 receiving yards, four touchdowns, all Peach Bowl records. I mean, they just put on a show. And honestly, the starters didn't even need to take the field once the second half started. They did. They played, I think, one or two possessions. But honestly, they didn't even even they didn't even need to because they had this game won at halftime. I mean, but LSU is for real. LSU is for real. They showed that. If you doubted that coming into the playoff, you know now. Even though honestly, a lot of people never really gave Oklahoma a chance, including myself. I didn't think they would win the game. You still would expect to see, you know, like, a, I don't even know if I want to say a better effort from them just because the LSU offense is so good. And I don't know if there's really anything they could have done. We all know Oklahoma doesn't have. The Big 12 isn't known for great defenses. And we saw why. They put that on display. And this, I saw this stat when I was on social media, and it really caught my eye. Joe Burrow has thrown for more touchdowns in Mercedes-Benz Stadium this season than Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, of course, is a starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. And Mercedes-Benz Stadium is the home of the Atlanta Falcons. Joe Burrow has thrown 11 to Matt Ryan's 8 in Mercedes-Benz this year. That is crazy. And as a total, the Falcons have 11 passing touchdowns, and so does Joe Burrow. I saw that stat, and I had to speak on it because that's crazy. But like I was talking about Oklahoma, it was a great year for Oklahoma. It was, there was a little bit of uncertainty following last season after Kyler Murray left, like who will be the quarterback, or they go with somebody who was already there. 
But then, as we know, Jalen Hurts ended up transferring in, and he had a great season, led the team in passing, rushing, been the second in the Heisman, made it back to the college football playoff for the fourth time in his four years. Just amazing. The only quarterback to ever start for two different schools in the college football playoffs. And what he did, not just on the field, but his humility, which he showed off the field, is one reason that fans really love and really have gravitated towards Jalen Hurts. Shout out to him. Great career. Hopefully we get to see you play at the next level. But I know if we don't, you'll be doing something great. And you'll be getting recognized for that. This won't be the last we hear of Jalen Hurts, whether he plays in the NFL or not. Whatever he does, he will make an impact and he will be recognized for that. Now let me speak on Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley, after replacing the legendary Bob Stoops, has led the Sooners to three consecutive trips to the college football playoff. Now that is great for Oklahoma, and I know they hope this will continue, but will Lincoln Riley be back next season? Will he get pulled into the NFL ranks? Will one of those, um, one of those organizations come get Riley from Oklahoma, throw a big load of cash at him, and say, look, we want you to be the next leader of this organization, the next head coach of our organization. I know that the what team, the, the, the Cowboys, I know the Cowboys have been out there for a while. A lot of people have attached them to the Cowboys, but now I'm hearing other names as far as the Cowboys coaching search, but they haven't officially fired Jason Garrett yet. So we'll wait to see what happens. Um, if that was his last game with Oklahoma, I mean, he's done great for that program. Like I said, two highs and winning quarterbacks, two number one overall quarterbacks and the third Jalen Hurts who finished second in the Heisman um, and we'll see what he does at the next level as well but definitely a great stint for Riley at Oklahoma and if that was the last we'll see of him as the head coach of Oklahoma I'm sure he's still satisfied with how his time went despite the the rough loss to LSU on the last game of the season but since we're talking about the Sooners still, C.D. Lamb, the star wide receiver, and Kenneth Murray, the star linebacker for the Sooners, will both be first-round picks. C.D. Lamb, I got him going anywhere from 10 to 15 because he's just a dynamic weapon, especially after he gets the ball in his hand. And Kenneth Murray is honestly like the quarterback on the defense, and we know that's what the middle linebacker is supposed to be. Supposed to be. He flies to the ball, has great instincts, and that's why I believe he'll be – a first round pick as well. I'll, I can see him being the first linebacker. I would be actually surprised if he isn't the first linebacker selected in the 2020 NFL draft. But on to the other semifinal Ohio State versus Clemson is what we hoped it would be. It was a competitive game that came down to the last possession. It was nothing like the Peach Bowl blowout. There was a lot of controversy in this game, though, all of which seemed to go against Ohio State. And that's not me, just me pleading as an Ohio State fan and one sympathy. I'm just saying, honestly, what, what happened out there. You had the targeting on Sean Wade, which took him out the game. That was early in the first half. Ohio State was up 16-0. They make that sack, and they're about to get off the field. But then, no. Targeting's called. Wade's kicked out of the game. Clemson gets 15 yards and ends up scoring on that drive. Hurt Ohio State big. That was the first controversial play. The next one was a scoop and score. Uh, I believe it was Justin Ross for Clemson. He caught a pass from Trevor Lawrence. Well, I guess it wasn't a pass. But he caught the ball from Trevor Lawrence. And it looks like it looked like it was a catch. Jeffrey Okuda got the ball loose. Jordan Fuller scooped it up. Ran to the end zone. Ohio State would have taken a, what would it have been? I think it would have been a 22 to 21 lead before the extra point. But they reviewed the play because initially on the field, it was called a fumble. They reviewed it. They said it was an incomplete pass because he never had full possession and didn't make a football move. But when you look at the replay, he took three or four steps. So he did have possession of the ball. Now, I heard someone say that the rule would be a little different in the field of play than it would like near the sideline. Because so if he caught the ball by the sideline and he got it both feet down, and he took three three or four steps, that would have been considered a catch, and Okuda basically would have been getting the ball loose after the catch was already completed. But in the field of play, it's different. I guess they have to go upfield or be able to dive and make an actual football play. But if you look at that, I mean, he caught the ball. He caught it, took those steps, and then the ball was ripped loose for him. But regardless, that wasn't what lost Ohio State the game. They had plenty of other opportunities after that. But even before that, all those chances, they had three chances in the red zone in the first half, and they kicked three field goals. 
three chances to score against a Clemson team who we talked about, who people have been overlooking all year. You know they're hungry coming into this game. And you know they can score them when they want to because they have a high power offense as well, as well. And you get three trips and they result in three field goals. The only touchdown in the first half came on that long 68 yard run by J.K. Dobbins. That's it. But Clemson, they did what they do in these big games. They hung around and made plays in the most crucial moments, and they got the job done. Trevor Lawrence was able to be effective using his legs. He had over 100 yards rushing. He had a long run. I think it, it might have been like 60-something. He had a long, long run. He got It was like a quarterback draw straight up the middle. They read the Ohio State defense, took advantage of it. Travis Etienne, we all were talking about him and J.K. Dobbins heading to this game, how the running backs can make a big difference on the result. But ETN showed his versatility as a pass catcher. He had two receiving touchdowns, and both were big. Both came in vital moments of the game. The last one gave them the lead and eventually was the go-ahead touchdown. But next, I have to talk about J.K. Dobbins because he showed up and performed like he has all season. He had 18 carries, 174 yards, and one touchdown. His longest run of the day was that 68-yard touchdown run. It gave Ohio State a 10 0 lead at the moment. And I think he also had a 64 yarder later in the game. But if you ask me, he needed more carries. Yes, he did. He was able to break Eddie George's single season rushing record, and he finished with 2,003 yards on the season. But he had some moments in that game where I wish I could have got more from him. He caught a touchdown that was ruled, initially ruled a touchdown, but then it was overturned after re- the review because the ball did hit the ground before he had full possession. And he dropped he dropped a screen pass on third and long that would have probably been a touchdown. He had blockers in front of him, had a bunch of space. That could have been a touchdown, but that resulted in another field goal. Those, those are two instances where Ohio State was in the red zone and got a field goal. There was one more, but J.K. was a part of both of those, those drives and could have made big plays. But I feel like J.K., should have also gotten more carries. He had 18 carries, 174 yards, 9.7 yards a carry. Great numbers. That's great. And he did what he had to do. But, listen, Justin Fields, he had some questionable moments in the game. He threw the ball 46 times. J.K. ran in it 18. That's cool. But, listen, we in these last games, these tough games we've been winning, J.K. has been getting 20, 25, 30 rushes. I would have liked to see that again. I'm sorry. Come on. I mean – I know if you look at J.K.'s game, he had those two big runs. I said 68 and 64. So that's 132 of his 174 yards right there. So the other runs, you know, were smaller runs where you're just pounding, getting yards, doing what you have to do, move the chains, etc. But come on, man, give him more. Give him 25. He, needs, he should have had 25 to 30 carries in this game. Fields, he's nice, but this is his first time in that position. You got to make – and you let him throw the ball 46 times. But like I was saying, Fields did have an up-and-down performance. He had a lot of good moments, throws, you know, all that, some good throws, some big-time plays by his wide receivers, but he also had some questionable decision-making. And along with that, he uncharacteristically threw two interceptions in this game after only throwing one all season. And the last pass, his last pass of the game was an interception when Ohio State was driving. They were about to score. As a fan, I was like, just based on how the game was going in the second half and how Clemson, the defense, was stopping Ohio State from moving up the field in the second half, I was like, man, is 149, I think that's how much was left. Is that enough for Ohio State to score? But as they begin to drive down the field, I'm like, okay, this might be that moment for Fields where he shows everybody this is what I'm made of. We will come back, and we will win this game. But it didn't quite end that way, but I still love the effort he gave. Um, Ohio State was driving. Ohio State, there was 43 seconds left on the clock. Ohio State had just called a timeout. Fields threw the ball. It was out uh, second and second and one. No, second and seven at the Clemson 23. Second and seven. His pass was intercepted in the back of the end zone, and Clemson was able to win the game and win the Fiesta Bowl and move on to the college football championship. But that drive, it seemed very promising, second and seven at the 23. And it was just commu- miscommunication between Fields and Chris Olave. Olave had just caught a touchdown earlier that it might have been later in the third or early in the fourth. I can't remember. But Olave had just caught a touchdown, and they tried it again. It was against the same 
safety, I believe it was a safety who was guarding against the same player he just scored against. So I saw what Fields was was trying to do. So I wasn't mad or anything. Alave was like, okay, it's taking long for this to develop. So I'm going to break out of my route and maybe try and get open. So he went to the left side and Fields thought he was going to continue coming across the field. He threw it. Alave went the other way. Defender followed the ball, got the interception. The game was over. But still, great season for Ohio State. Great sophomore season for Fields. That was still his first time leading the team. His first time as a full starter. And he got them to the semifinals. So, a great season for Justin Fields. He'll be back next season. I'm sure he'll be hungry, especially after how the season just ended. But Ohio State will lose a lot, especially on the defensive end of the ball. The Buckeyes are going to lose Chase Young and Jeffrey Okuda and probably the rest of the secondary to the NFL. Jordan Fuller, the great safety, he'll be graduating, and I can see him getting drafted playing at the next level. Sean Wade, he could come back. He was a part of that 2017 class with Okuda, so he could come back for his senior season. But in my mind, I think he'll enter the draft because he's a first-round talent. He can guard you in the slot. He can guard guys on the outside. So I think Sean Wade will be gone as well. But, yeah, the Ohio State has to try to replace basically that entire secondary. I saw some young guys get some time. They did some impressive things. They look good in the time that they did get this season. So we'll see what Ohio State can do next season. But with the departures of players who are graduating and or entering the NFL draft and Jeff Halfley leaving to become the head coach at Boston College next season, Ohio State definitely has some work to do to get prepared for next season. Clemson gets a shot to repeat as champions. It's an all-Tiger matchup like I predicted in the last episode. And we have a matchup between potential number one picks in this year's draft, which will be Joe Burrow, and the potential number one pick in the 2021 draft, which will be Trevor Lawrence. Can Burrow become the first quarterback to win a Heisman and the national title in the same season since Jameis Winston, Mr. 30 for 30? I will go into more detail when I preview the title game, which will be two weeks from today. Well, actually two weeks from yesterday. Today's Tuesday. It's two, two weeks from Monday. But thank you guys for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your mama, share the five seconds on the clock podcast with everybody you know. Once again, thanks for tuning in. And I got more coming from y'all for y'all this week. Actually, I have something coming later today. I'm going to do the best of 2019, the best sports moments of 2019. That's coming out later today. And then later this week, I'll look at the NFL playoff picture and talk about some stuff that it, that happened on the last week of the season and preview some stuff heading into the wild card weekend in the playoffs in the NFL. Thank you all for tuning in. It's your boy Brandon Williams signing off for the 5 Seconds on the Clock podcast. Ya dig?